Number 10. The Moche The Moche culture flourished in Peru on the northern coast beginning in the year 200. There isn't a lot known about this mysterious ancient culture, other than they rose and fell surprisingly quickly, just before the famous Inca rose to power. The Moche left behind no written record to tell of their beliefs or traditions. By the time the Spanish arrived, the Moche territory had already been allocated by the Chimul people. What makes the Moche culture even harder to understand is the fact that, in the early 20th century, there was little to no proper archaeology going on in Peru. Many of the artifacts recovered from graves and ancient sites were taken into private collections with no context. Despite this, historians have been able to put together a few clues about the Moche based on the remaining ruins and the few pieces of architecture still standing. We know the Moche were divided into independent areas, along the northern coast and southern coast, with no political organization. There was no monarch or empire to speak of, but instead small autonomous groups that shared culture. The biggest piece of Moche architecture still standing is the Huaca del Sol, a pyramid structure on the Rio Moche. Then there's the Huaca de la Luna, which contains colorful murals drawn by the Moche. We're not sure what these people believed in or what they did, other than craft ceramics and practice agriculture. Scientists believe the Mochi were finally wiped out between 536 and 594 during a super climactic event that caused 30 years of flooding followed by 30 years of drought. Number 9. The People of the Cliffs In the American Southwest, there was once a mysterious race of people who dwelled within the desert cliffs. The rock-cut city of Mesa Verde was home to a people known as the Anasazi during the 13th century. In Spanish, Mesa Verde translates to Green Table, and in the Navajo language, Anasazi translates to The Ancient Ones. Much like other mysterious cultures that vanished without a trace, the Anasazi never left behind any writings about themselves. It's believed they never developed a written system, though they undoubtedly had their own system of language. What they did leave behind was a fascinating rock city containing over 150 rooms, more of a palace carved into the cliff than anything else. The cliff ruins left over by the Anasazi are just as amazing as any other archaeological ruins in the world. According to Life Science, recent research has unveiled that the Anasazi may have had sophisticated mathematical understanding. It's possible they used similar mathematical ratios that helped the Egyptians to construct the pyramids at Giza. However, historians can't agree on how they came to learn such complicated math when they couldn't even develop the written word. These people lived in an area of about 10,000 square miles, territory that encompassed parts of Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. What's really strange is that the people here just vanished without a trace after doubling in population between the years 700 and 850. But then, between 850 and 930, the Anasazi disappeared into thin air, and scientists have never figured out why. Number 8. The Vikings of Greenland Some of the first people to ever occupy Greenland were the ancient Vikings. This cold and vast primordial land was settled by Norse warriors in the 10th century. Vikings lived here for about 400 years, give or take a year or two. There are still ruins of churches built by the Norse settlers in Greenland, but what scientists and historians have been struggling with is the fact that Vikings gave up their settlement in Greenland in the 14th century and never bothered to return. For a race of people who wanted more territory and more security, it seems silly that they would have given up a perfectly good colony for no reason. Historians have long purported that the Viking settlements in Greenland were abandoned because of climate conditions. The weather got too cold and the Norse settlers left. But a new theory says this isn't the case. Nicholas Young from Columbia University believes there was no climate change that affected the colony. By analyzing isotopes and boulders taken from Greenland and Baffin Island, Scientists have determined that Greenland was cold when the Vikings arrived and it was still cold when they left. So why did they leave? They had livestock, there was hunting, and they even exported goods like walrus ivory to Europe. A new theory says the Vikings may have been at war with the native Inuit, and they lost. While another theory says it was actually the Black Death that killed all the Vikings. Number 7. The Olmec the Olmec was the first major society to live in Mexico. 
Forget about the Maya, they came much later. The Olmec lived throughout the Gulf of Mexico, in the modern states of Tabasco and Veracruz from between 1600 BCE to 350 BCE. In the Aztec language, Olmec means rubber people. Scientists believe the name comes from the fact that the Olmec were the first ones who figured out how to convert natural latex from the rubber tree into something that could be used as a building material. The Olmec were surprisingly advanced. They didn't have a writing system like the Romans, but they did create glyphs and symbols that they probably used as some sort of written communication, though archaeologists have never been able to decode the glyphs. The most famous constructs left behind by the Olmec people are giant heads which they carved from basalt rock. Some of these stone heads are up to 20 tons heavy. It's believed they were crafted to commemorate the mighty rulers of their civilization. Most of the Olmec lived in small villages and towns, though there were two urban centers called San Lorenzo and La Venta, which were used mostly for ritual purposes. Even though the Olmec didn't leave behind any written accounts of their beliefs, judging by the artwork left behind, historians have been able to figure out that they worshipped some kind of shark monster, a maze deity, and a rain spirit in the form of a human-jaguar hybrid. Number 6. The Aksumite The Kingdom of Aksum is located in modern Ethiopia, specifically the northern Tigray region. It was a major civilization and a huge power during the first centuries of the Common Era. The Kingdom of Aksum had a far-reaching influence, touching parts of Arabia, Egypt, and even all the way to the Far East. The kingdom reached its peak during the 4th century. They had the only written script in all of Africa, they were the strongest trading empire in the region, bartering with the Mediterranean and Arabia, and Aksum was even described as one of the four great powers on the planet at the time. Despite this, very little is known about Aksum today. There are no histories, legends, or detailed descriptions that speak of what went on inside the kingdom. And to be honest, most of what we know actually comes from the Greeks and the Romans and their descriptions of Aksum. What we do know is that Aksum was one of the first great kingdoms to embrace Christianity in the 4th century. Even Judaism managed to take hold in the kingdom, unlike anywhere else in Africa. Back in the 1980s, Israel even worked to move the Jewish population out of Ethiopia to Israel. Number 5. The Kushite the Kingdom of Kush is another mysterious civilization that had a huge impact on history and is virtually unknown today. The kingdom was located in what is now northern Sudan. It was part of Nubia, a great land that stretched all across the North Nile to the Red Sea. The culture flourished and thrived for over 3,000 years, shaping much of the cultural landscape of northeastern Africa. We know the Egyptians often warred with the Nubians. We also know the Kushite people in Nubia relied heavily on trade. They had a cosmopolitan trading center from which they exchanged goods with much of the African interior, the Arabian desert across the Red Sea, and even the Mediterranean basin. They traded gold, ivory, exotic animals like monkeys and elephants, and in exchange, they often imported things like bronze and oil. But the Kingdom of Kush is a little more complicated than that. According to the National Geographic Society, there were actually three distinct kingdoms here with three different capitals. The most famous is undoubtedly Meroe, where even today there are over 250 pyramids around the ancient city. There are more pyramids here than in all of Egypt, and just like the Egyptian pyramids, these were built as tombs. There were dozens of kings and queens and nobles buried here, though most of their grave goods and corpses were already pillaged before modern archaeology. The big difference between the pyramids of Meroe and the pyramids of Egypt are size and style. The Nubian pyramids are smaller, pointier, and made of pure black stone. Number 4. The People of the Mississippi One of the most ancient and mysterious civilizations that ever lived in North America resided along the Mississippi. These were Native Americans who built pyramids and observatories and even practiced human sacrifice. They rose to power in the Mississippi Valley in what is today Illinois, back in 700 AD. They thrived until about 100 years before Columbus stumbled upon America, though why exactly they vanished is still something of a mystery. The most populous city of the Mississippi people was Cahokia, with a population of about 15,000. 
For back then, that was pretty impressive. It was actually the largest city north of Mexico prior to Europeans. It consisted of 120 earth mounds, with each mound boasting a pyramid with a flat top, where the leaders of society lived. There was also a vast plaza in the very center of the city used for trade and probably religious activities. Along the outskirts of the main city, there was a rich agricultural belt used to feed those who lived in the area. The civilization was also advanced, with a system of government, a hierarchy of religious leaders, and plenty of skilled craftsmen and even astronomers. However, the great city of Cahokia and its people suffered probably because of an environmental disaster. The first people from the outside world to discover Cahokia was a French explorer in 1673. He found the city deserted and apparently vacant already for 300 years. Not even the local indigenous groups had any knowledge of who built the abandoned city or where they went. Number 3. The Scylla Between the 1st century BCE and the 7th century AD, Korea was ruled by the Scylla Kingdom. Scylla was at war with the neighboring kingdoms for most of their rule, though they did finally conquer each of their neighbors and unite the Korean peninsula in 668 AD. For the next almost 300 years, the United Scylla Kingdom was a singular Korea, and one of the most devastating powers anywhere in Asia. What's really interesting is just how the Scylla Kingdom rose to power. According to the World History Encyclopedia, it all started when tribes from southeastern Korea formed a type of confederacy. The leaders of this confederacy were nothing more than community shamans. They imposed an inheritance system of rule meaning leadership passed on from father to son. They also began battling and absorbing weaker confederations. Their true rise to power was helped by China, which was ruled by the Tang Dynasty at the time. With China's help, the Scylla crushed each kingdom to finally unite the peninsula in 668. Like most ancient civilizations, Scylla tore itself apart after taking control of the region. Civil war and political unrest fractured the kingdom and it eventually fell, giving rise to the Goryeo Kingdom in 918. Number 2. The Norte Chico Civilization The Norte Chico Civilization is the oldest known society anywhere in North America or South America. It originated in the year 3500 BCE, around the same time that the Egyptians were building their pyramids, and 2000 years before the Olmec Civilization of Mexico that we spoke of earlier. They survived for quite some time, living in northern Peru until about 1800 BCE. At its peak, there were about 30 major population centers, most of them clustered around three large river valleys. The Norte Chico culture left behind impressive architecture from huge platform mounds to the ruins of complex plazas. They had no writing system, though archaeological evidence suggests that they may have figured out how to craft textiles and that they worshipped a single common god. But because the civilization is so old, and so many others were built on its bones, nobody has been able to figure out how it was organized, what its political system looked like, or how the society functioned. But what's really incredible is that, so far, there has been no evidence that the Norte Chico civilization engaged in violence. There have been no weapons found, there is no evidence of fought battles, and, so far as historians can tell, this is one of the only legit peaceful societies that ever prospered in the history of the human race. Number 1. The Jiahu Culture The Jiahu Culture is believed to be one of the oldest from China. Almost nothing is known about these ancient people. The only reason scientists even know they existed is because of excavations that came from an archaeological site in the Henan province in which scientists discovered human occupation dating back 9,000 years. At the Jiahu site, archaeologists found the oldest crafted wine in the world, ancient musical instruments, and the earliest known example of Chinese writing. There were also ruins found of houses, tools made from both stone and bone, and all the telltale signs of a functioning complex society. And this was 9,000 years ago way before the Egyptians even thought about building pyramids. It's not clear how exactly these people got here, where they came from, or how they managed to progress so much faster than other places in the world. Everything they did was advanced, from their architecture to their art. 
But because they didn't leave behind any written accounts of their beliefs or systems, historians haven't had much to go on. We know this was probably the cradle of civilization for Asia and definitely the start of the great empire that is today, China. But how? Well, that's still a mystery. Which of these civilizations do you find the most fascinating? Number 10. Mysterious Roman Relics Found in Brazil In the southeast of Brazil, there's a place called Guanabara Bay. It's close to Rio de Janeiro and is the second largest bay in all of Brazil. There isn't that much special about the bay, other than various relics from ancient Rome that were discovered 15 miles from the shore buried under 100 feet of water. If you know anything about history, you'll know there should not be any ancient Roman artifacts anywhere near Brazil. The Romans never made contact with Brazil. They had no knowledge of South America at all. And yet, the relics somehow made it across the world anyway. The strange archaeological discovery was made in 1976 by lobster divers, who discovered a jar encrusted with barnacles at the bottom of the bay. These turned out to be amphorae, ancient jars used by the Greeks and Romans to carry things like wine or grain during voyages across the sea. Then, in 1982, treasure hunter Robert Marx tried to find more precious objects. With permission from the Brazilian government, a team of experts began scanning the bay using sophisticated sonar technology. The team found over 200 more amphorae. Tests proved that they'd been down there in the muck for thousands of years. They probably came from the second century Rome, even though the first Europeans didn't make it into Brazil until the year 1500. That would be about 1700 years after the jars were made. To this day, nobody has any idea how the mysterious jars made it all the way to Brazil. If a broken vessel had somehow gotten blown across the sea, or if Roman voyagers made it across the Atlantic but couldn't find their way back, nobody knows the truth. Number 9. Prehistoric Animal Carvings For the first time in Scotland, prehistoric animal carvings have been discovered hidden inside an old burial cairn dating back 5,000 years. According to Historic Environment Scotland, the carvings were made inside Dunkregeg Cairn, one of the more famous burial sites in Scotland. The carvings come from either the Neolithic or Early Bronze Age, and they show two red deer, which back then were the largest species of deer in the region. These deer were very important to the earliest Neolithic communities of Scotland. The ancient people ate their meat, used their hides to make shelter and clothing, and use their bones and antlers for tools and weapons. These carvings are now the oldest example of drawn animals by ancient people anywhere in the UK. They were scrawled on the capstone of the ancient burial chamber, suggesting whoever was buried inside was a respected member of the community and a skilled hunter of red deer. It's important to note that there are a lot of carved rocks in Scotland, about 3,000 that date back to prehistoric times. But these are mostly carvings of abstract rings and other strange symbols. Almost none of them actually depict living beings. Number 8. Elite Women Researchers from Spain recently analyzed the contents of a tomb discovered in 2014 at the archaeological site of La Amaloya. The person buried here belonged to the El Argar Society that flourished between 2200 and 1550 BCE. They developed the first state organization anywhere in the Western Mediterranean. This newest study has proved that women may have played a crucial role in the governance of the civilization. Here's the deal with the burial. It was found to contain the body of a man between the ages of 35 and 40, and a woman between the ages of 25 and 30. Beside them was a pile of prestigious objects, many embellished with silver and almost all of them probably belonging to the woman. She was buried with a huge treasure of jewels and personal objects like necklaces and bracelets. She was also found with a silver diadem on her skull. Researchers have gathered that she was probably more important than the man she was buried with. Plus, researchers have already found other tombs containing what appears to be very rich women. All clues point to a society potentially ruled by wealthy females perhaps making up the entirety of the dominant ruling class. 
Number 7. Golden Cannonball Aaron Smith was exploring around Yorkshire in the British town of Whitby when he discovered a shocking golden cannonball with something even more amazing hidden inside. Aaron was only 22 years old when he made the discovery. After finding the perfectly round and very shiny ball, he realized all signs pointed to it containing a fossil. And Aaron is no noob when it comes to fossils. He hunts at least twice a week through local areas known to be rich in fossils. While the golden cannonball may have looked like a solid ball of metal, it actually opened quite easily. Aaron split the cannonball open to discover a fossil dating back 185 million years. The fossil was that of an ammonite. Ammonites were ancient cephalopods that lived between the Devonian period and the Cretaceous period, or 419 to 66 million years ago. They're frequently found fossilized on beaches throughout the world. Number 6. Mass Grave in France In France, archaeologists uncovered a mass grave between July and November of 2020. The grave dates back to the late Neolithic, between 3100 and 2900 BCE. The grave was discovered because of a project to create a bypass in the center of the country. According to the Archaeology News Network, this is the first collective burial from the late Neolithic found in the region. The burial itself makes up a rectangular pit, about 12 feet long and just shy of 6 feet wide. At some point, a rectangular wooden structure had held the bodies. The wood has long since decayed, though evidence of it remains. It had likely been some kind of burial box with a lid that allowed the ancient people to dump more bodies into the pit, as need be. As of now, nobody really knows what culture the dead people belong to. There were at least 40 individuals found inside the grave, including adult, children, and teenagers. Number 5. Cattle Bone Carvings Archaeologists have discovered what could be the oldest symbols ever drawn by human hand. They found a bone fragment riddled with six lines. The lines were engraved on the cattle bone 120,000 years ago. It was discovered by Israeli and French archaeologists at the ancient site of Nesher Ramla in Israel. According to Yossi Zedner, who was involved in the study, the lines could be the oldest symbolic engravings ever found on the planet. The discovery should help scientists to understand how symbolic expression developed in our species. The markings were found on one side of an otherwise undamaged bone, which has led researchers to speculate that the engravings probably held spiritual meaning. Nobody has any idea what six lines on an animal bone could possibly mean, but the symbols were definitely made on purpose. The type of cattle the bone came from is called an auroch, an ancient animal that went extinct 500 years ago. Flint tools were also found near the bone, which researchers say were probably used to make the engravings. Number 4. Knight's Arsenal A man with a metal detector made a fascinating discovery in Europe. He found an arsenal of knight's weaponry left over from the biggest recorded battle that took place in medieval Europe. It's known as the Battle of Grunwald and it was fought between the Polish-Lithuanian forces and the Teutonic Knights during the Teutonic War back in July of 1410. The battle itself took place in territory owned by the monastic state of the Teutonic Order. The order consisted of battle-hardened Germans and Prussians led by Grand Master Ulrich von Ugengen. But unfortunately for the Teutonic Knights, they were defeated and the Germans were seriously weakened by the loss. As for the discovery, it was found by Alexander Medvedev. He discovered part of a belt buckle, some knives, a sword, and a scabbard, with all the artifacts likely belonging to warriors who died during the battle. For those interested in tracking down even more amazing discoveries from the site of the battle, the exact location has not been given to the public. These weapons were still in shockingly good shape after being lost under a few inches of dirt for 600 years. Number 3. Shell Bead Currency Archaeologists have discovered a very strange form of currency, left behind by the Kumash Indians, that once lived in the region around what is today Santa Barbara. The currency comes in the form of beads, with the beads being crafted from olive sea snails. According to Professor Lynn Gamble from the University of California, 
These beads were used for currency during a span of around a thousand years, starting around the first century AD. In other words, the Kumash were using beads as money 2,000 years ago. This dramatically changes our interpretation of these ancient people, who we thought were simple hunters and gatherers may have actually been part of a complex economic society. Also, this could be the first example of money being traded in the Americas from 2,000 years ago. But how do we even know these beads were used as money and not just as decoration? First of all, large amount of beads were found on single individuals buried thousands of years ago, suggesting they hoarded their money. These beads are also significantly larger and more standardized than those used as decoration. This means they were all made to be of equal value. Nobody knows exactly how much a single bead was worth or what it was traded for, but professional archaeologists are starting to accept that the ancient people in the Americas may have had their very own system of currency. Number 2. Crystal Dagger A very rare crystal dagger has been discovered in a prehistoric tomb and it dates back 5,000 years. The discovery was made in Spain by a team excavating an ancient tomb in prehistoric Iberia. What's truly fascinating about the dagger is that it's not made of the traditional stone or flint. It was instead crafted from a special rock crystal. The dagger is about 8.5 inches long and was discovered alongside 10 arrowheads and a small stash of blades, all of them made from rock crystal. Researchers have suggested that whoever owned these weapons paid a hefty price for them. They had likely been an elite individual, possibly a leader or a renowned warrior. Even more interesting is that researchers say the crystal dagger may have been viewed as a magical item. Rock crystal weapons may have been thought by the ancient people to possess powers of vitality. They could have also been used in special rituals. So far, experts don't know exactly who wielded the crystal dagger, or how many of them were ever made, or really what culture this person was even a part of. Number 1. Roman Love God during the construction of a highway in southwestern England, archaeologists stumbled upon an ancient figurine of an old Roman god. The figurine is in the shape of Cupid, and it dates back 2,000 years. According to Smithsonian Magazine, the figure was also found with a brooch in the shape of a bow, yes, just like Cupid's bow, and a human skeleton. What you might be surprised about is that at least 50 other Roman Cupid figurines have already been found in the United Kingdom. Thousands of years ago, Cupid was kind of a big deal. The winged god of love was beloved by pretty much everyone. After all, if you had to follow one of the old gods, it might as well have been Cupid. But this discovery yielded some other strange results. For example, the skeleton was discovered buried face down. This was normally a sign of disrespect for the dead, something reserved for criminals or a person disliked by their community. At the same time, the figurine and the ornate brooch were quite sophisticated, suggesting they had been owned by an individual of great wealth. As of right now, nobody knows who this person was or why they were so hated to be buried with their face in the dirt, and truth be told, we may never know. Which of these crazy discoveries was your favorite? Number 10. Okiku In 1918, a young man in Japan purchased a doll as a gift for his younger sister, Akiku. She was just two years old at the time he gave it to her. The doll was about the average size of any doll you might see a little girl holding today. It was dressed in a traditional kimono, and it had raven pitch black hair. It was quite the doll, and he was excited to see his sister's face light up when he gave it to her. He rushed home and presented his present. It became her all-time favorite toy. She took the doll everywhere with her. In fact, she hardly ever put the doll down. Okiku had a best friend in the form of a mini girl. It was only a short year later that disaster struck. In 1919, Okiku tragically died of the heinous illness, yellow fever. It was a horrendous death, with Okiku suffering until the very last breath she took. And also, until that very last breath, she was with her favorite doll. The family had intended to bury the doll with the little girl, but instead it ended up at the family altar. This was a common practice in Japan, in which families would build a small shrine to commemorate the dead. 
That was when some pretty weird stuff started happening. The family began to have creepy dreams of Okiku. Sometimes they would even wake up with the doll beside them, the lights would flicker on and off, and strange noises would sound throughout the house. They even noticed that the doll's hair appeared to be growing. Her hair was once shoulder length and smooth, but it grew past her waist and had a rough texture. They eventually learned that their daughter's soul had become trapped inside the doll. The family ended up moving away years later, and were afraid that the doll's magical powers were linked to their daughter's nearby grave. They decided to let the doll stay at a temple with priests and be close by to the cemetery. Today, the doll is still holding on to Akiku's soul. It's located in the small town of Iwamisawa, held in a private shrine and hidden inside of a small wooden box. Number 9. The Shop Ledger Back in 1988, when Tony Benovitz was demolishing his shop in England, he discovered a ledger bricked inside the wall. The ledger was from 1915 and in surprisingly good shape. However, after taking the ledger home to check it out, strange things started happening to Tony and his family. His daughter would see images appear as if by magic in her bedroom rug, including the eerie shapes and smiles of men and children. Everyone in the house reported having ghoulish encounters with what they described as haunting spirits. Totally freaked out, Tony took the ledger to one of the most haunted places in all of England, Preston Manor. As an historical item, and one that was apparently haunted, Paula Wrightson with the manor was happy to check it out. She took the mysterious ledger from the family and put it on her desk, and left it there for a few weeks. She later had a medium come and inspect the book, who said bad things were emanating from it. But just what exactly is inside the ledger? Really, nothing interesting. Just an exact log of what was sold in the shop a century ago. Other than that, it's completely normal. But still, anyone who spends too much time with the book ends up getting freaked out and wanting nothing to do with it. We just can't figure out why in the world it's haunted. Do you have any ideas? Number 8. The Great Haunted Bed In the small town of Ware, there's a famous bed. It's called the Great Bed of Ware, and people come from all over the world to take pictures of it. This bed is absolutely massive big enough for six couples to sleep comfortably. It might also be a little haunted. The bed was constructed in 1463 by Jonas Fosbrook and given over to the royal family in England. It was an absolute behemoth and very much impressed King Edward IV, so much that he gave the builder a very generous pension to see him through the rest of his life. Eventually, as the years went on, the bed was given to the Lord of Ware Manor, who gifted it to various inns in the town where people could pay huge amounts of money to look at and even sleep in the bed. But apparently, anyone who slept in the bed wound up having a horrible night. They would experience scratching sensations. They would feel as if they were being pinched and kicked. They would sweat through their clothes, have horrible nightmares. It was just a really terrible experience overall. Some even woke up the next morning covered in bruises and completely drained of emotion and energy. To this day, nobody knows why the bed is so haunted. It could be the builder haunting the bed for an unknown reason, or it could be a completely random poltergeist. Why do you think this massive bed is haunted? Let us know in the comments down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. The Kohinoor Diamond the Kohinoor is one of the strangest diamonds in the entire world. According to the BBC, it has been around for centuries and has cycled between ancient Iranian warriors, Mughal princes, and even Punjabi maharajas. It's a beautiful gemstone, 105 carats, and it fell into the hands of the British in the 19th century. Now, the diamond is part of the crown jewels and is housed at the Tower of London inside an impenetrable fortress. The first mention of the diamond is from somewhere around 1300, when it was allegedly stolen from the Raja of Malwa in what is modern India. Ever since, it has brought misery and misfortune to all those who have owned it. But actually, not everyone. Women are apparently able to wear the diamond with impunity. It's only the men who came into possession of the diamond by means of war who suffered the misfortune. After the diamond was captured by the East India Company in 1851, they handed it over to Queen Victoria. Everyone was aware of the curse, but no one could give up such a precious jewel. So it made more sense to give it to the Queen rather than 
risk any kind of trouble befalling the male heir to the British throne. It's been kept in the hands of a woman ever since. Number 6. Forbidden Mummy In 1972, eight mummies were discovered inside a pair of tombs in Greenland. The mummies were incredibly well preserved, still having their hair, eyebrows, fingernails, and skin. They became known as the Kilikitsak mummies, named after the abandoned Inuit settlement where they were discovered. The youngest corpse found here was that of a six-month-old child. According to the scientists who investigated the petrified remains, the child had mysteriously been buried alive. Oddly enough, the infant was actually the most well-preserved out of all of the mummies found. Archaeologists say it's probably because he froze quicker than his family members. Nobody knows why he was buried alive, although it's been suggested that he was buried with his dead mother to make sure they were able to enter the afterlife with one another. The child's horrifying corpse hasn't caused any paranormal abnormalities that we know of, but it's honestly so scary to look at that one glance will leave you haunted for the rest of your life, seeing only its empty eye sockets and stretched skin each time you dream. Number 5. The Hands Resist Him In the year 2000, an anonymous seller began an auction for what was labeled a haunted painting. In the advertisement, there was a warning to all potential buyers that the painting boasted supernatural powers, and the person selling it had suffered nothing but misery since it came into their possession. The seller claimed the picture would change form at night, with the dolls in the painting actually coming to life. Just days after the painting appeared online, stories started coming in of people having horrible reactions from just looking at the picture on their screen from people fainting to children screaming. Nobody knows why the painting is so horrifying or how it exercises so much power over people. What we do know is that the bid shot from $200 to over $1,000 before it was eventually sold. The buyer later said that they never experienced any strangeness themselves, though people who looked at the painting would often experience gut-wrenching fear for no apparent reason. Would you ever hang up a painting in your house that was potentially haunted? Number 4. The British Museum's Artifacts The British Museum hosts literally tens of thousands of different artifacts, and apparently some of them might be a little haunted. It's been reported that inside the British Museum at night, people have witnessed specters, they felt sudden drops in temperature, and they've heard inexplicable noises. The security staff who patrol the enormous museum and the most popular tourist attraction in all of Britain do so using flashlights. They walk through the halls looking for water leaks, making sure nobody got left behind, and sometimes witnessing paranormal activity. This shouldn't be a big surprise. There are 94 rooms open to the public, and many more artifacts from all around the world secreted away behind locked doors. Some of these artifacts have ghoulish stories and history, or are just completely terrifying to look at in general. One night, one of the guards witnessed, for just a split second, the figure of a two-headed dog. He attributed his sighting to a wooden Congolese fetish from the 19th century that seemed to exude some kind of mysterious power. The fetish bristles with wrought iron nails, and apparently when a security guard pays a little too much attention to the odd artifact, the fire alarms sometimes go off like some kind of creepy warning. Number 3. Cursed Chest Speaking of a museum with haunted artifacts, the Kentucky Historical Society has a unique relic associated with at least 18 deaths. On the outside, it looks just like a simple chest of drawers. It's called the Conjured Chest, and it was donated to the museum back in 1976 after haunting the main family for generations. The chest was probably made around 1830 in Kentucky and was carved by hand by a slave named Remus. But so far as the story goes, the man who had the chest commissioned was not happy with it, and so he beat the slave to death. To get revenge on the brutal murder, a group of African American slaves sprinkled dry owl blood in the drawers and cursed the chest. From then on, anyone who put their clothing in the chest suffered misfortune and usually died not long after. The first to perish was the child whom the chest was made for. She actually died in infancy. Then, the murderer who killed Remus, and then his nephew died after placing his clothes in the chest. This went on and on until the chest found its way to the main family. 18 very unfortunate people were dead by the time the family caught on and stopped letting people put clothing inside the chest. Now it's locked up tight in the Kentucky Historical Society. No one is allowed to store anything inside of it. Number 2. Pompeii Artifacts 
About 15 years ago, a troublemaking tourist stole fragments from the ancient city of Pompeii while on vacation. She was a poorly behaved Canadian woman, and she recently even sent the artifacts back to Spain after claiming her life had been made absolutely miserable ever since stealing them. She went so far as to claim the fragments were cursed. What exactly were these fragments of? Well, they were simple mosaic tiles, pieces of ceramic that she had taken when in her early 20s back in 2005. Upon returning from that trip, she experienced several years of intense suffering, including getting breast cancer twice and experiencing horrible financial ruin. Broke and defeated by her illness, she sent the mosaic tiles back to Italy with a note reading, Please take them back, they bring me bad luck. Whether these tiles really were cursed or her life just sucked because of karma, well, we may never know. Number 1. The Haunted Staircase At the Queen's House, there is a haunted staircase. If you're not sure what the Queen's House is, it was once a royal residence for the British monarchy built between 1616 and 1635 in the City of London. Today, it's a museum. But the story of the haunted staircase goes back to 1966, when a Canadian man visited the house and took a picture of the famous tulip staircase. At the time, everything seemed perfectly normal. It wasn't until the tourist got home and started going through the film that he realized he had taken a photograph of a ghostly figure hanging on the rails of the staircase, as if about to be sick. After the incident, the tourist swore nobody else was on the staircase at the time. When he took the photo, the staircase was completely empty. The next year, in 1967, a paranormal investigation organization called The Ghost Club went to the Queen's house to see what they could find. However, they never actually produced any real evidence of the paranormal. Surprise, surprise. Ever since then, though, there have been occasional people who witnessed something that may be a ghost. And to this day, people swear an unknown spirit is haunting the staircase. Though nobody could say why he's choosing to hang out there or why he appears to be sick. Thanks for watching. Which of these creepy artifacts freaked you out the most? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like the video for even more awesome content. See you next time. Bye bye.